تعتبر أستراليا الدولة الوحيدة بحجم قارة أكبر جزيرة في العالم ومن أكثر الدول استقطابا وترحيبا بالمهاجرين الذين كونوا مع السكان الأصليين تنوعا ثقافيا ثريا اقتصادها من أقوى اقتصادات العالم ويزورها سنويا ملايين السواح الذين تجذبهم الشواطئ الجميلة والطبيعة الخلابة والبيئة المريحة والطقس المعتدل إضافة إلى الثقافات والفنون المتنوعة My name is Mark Donovan, and I'm the ambassador of the Commonwealth of Australia to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And I've been very pleased to be here for about two and a half years. An ambassador's role can become all-consuming. Uh, when I get up in the morning, my capital city, Canberra, is already hard at work and expecting the same of me. So my day is filled with meetings, work, inside the embassy, outside the embassy, and a lot of functions in the evenings as well. My previous posting was in Amman in Jordan and so I started to get a sense of what Saudi Arabia would be like. Uh, I studied the Middle East at university and I was able to meet a lot of Middle Eastern ambassadors in Canberra but also in other cities around the world and that included Saudi diplomats as well so I had a little bit of a sense but I didn't want to arrive here with a preconception. So when I arrived, uh, I was very, very pleasantly surprised by what I encountered. Saudi hospitality is now world famous and it's been great to encounter that here. Jeddah is very different to Riyadh. It has a completely different feel, not just because it's a seaside city, but because for so long, it was the cosmopolitan gateway for Muslim pilgrims to make their way to Medina and Mecca. And so I really like getting down to Jeddah just to see the difference. Bereda was great to see. It was fantastic to be able to see the city that is so famous for the production of dates in Saudi Arabia. I'm really keen to get down to Abha. It looks beautiful. Uh, and I'm also very keen to get to Alula. My deputy has just come back from a trip to Damam and she was really pleased to, again, like me, start to understand the cultural diversity within the kingdom. Riyadh's a great city. It's bustling, it's changing, it's modernising, it's transforming. I like the history. To go over to Bujairi Terrace and Daraya is fantastic. To walk around Saudi Arabia and to walk around Riyadh and to understand what is happening here is a great opportunity for a foreign diplomat because our number one job is to explain Saudi Arabia to our capital, to our people back home. In early 2022, I was really pleased to see the Biennale at Dorea. Um, I'm looking forward to it again. I attended the opening of the new Museum of Contemporary Art and the art there was phenomenal. But the roots and the history of Saudi Arabia are as important, if not even more so. So to be able to go downtown to see the National Museum of Saudi Arabia, but also to see an, just an exhibition of uh, Arab coins and understand the history and situate things in history. Um, I've been to a few shows 
Uh, the recent opera festival was fantastic. So much effort went into putting on a good show. And I'm really pleased that the current production of Phantom of the Opera visiting Riyadh includes an Australian in the lead role. Sport plays a big part in Australian lives. And for us, seeing how sport is becoming so important in Saudi Arabia, it's important for me to understand what the um, connections between Saudi and Australian sport can be. A couple of weeks ago, I had a meeting with the head of the Saudi Cricket Federation. We were talking about how we can foster those links, those sporting links between Australia and Saudi Arabia. And I've had a number of those conversations with the Ministry of Sport as well. Australia is a very important country in the Arab Saudi Australia is one of the few countries التي لدينا مع معها اتفاقية اسمها الاتفاقية الاقتصادية وتبحث في أمور كثيرة متعلقة بالاقتصاد هناك طبعا اللجنة المشتركة وتواصل اجتماعاتها باستمرار في في المملكة وفي أستراليا هناك جمعية الصداقة البرلمانية في مجلس الشورى السعودي وهذه واحدة من اللجان الفعالة في 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 مجلس الشورى السعودي ثم آخر اتفاقيات كانت اتفاقية إنشاء مجلس الأعمال السعودي الأسترالي مع مجلس الغرف السعودية وكان هذا المجلس فعال جدا وكان نشيط وكان يعني أنا أنا أقول هذا الكلام لأني كنت عضو مدة طويلة في هذا المجلس وكنت أحضر اجتماعاته وأقارنه ببقية المجالس فاهتمام من الجانبين كان عالي جدا We have several thousand Australians here in the Kingdom. They're in a variety of occupations. Um, several of the CEOs of the largest companies in Saudi Arabia are Australian. Uh, several hundred Australians are working on the Giga projects, which is fantastic to see. There are a lot of other Australians in the private sector. Um, for them, uh, their life here is, as I understand it, pretty good. Um, it is much easier for an Australian to live here in the Kingdom now than it was, say, 10 years ago. Um, and that has encouraged a significant number of Australians to consider the option of moving here. The numbers of Saudis visiting Australia is not large um, and with the investment Saudi Arabia is making in tourism and particularly in new airlines like Riyadh Air, we are expecting those numbers to increase. Tourism plays an important role in building people-to-people -people links. Saudi is a long way away from Australia and Saudi students are phenomenal envoys for Saudi Arabia. They are the main reason that Australians can understand what is happening here in the Kingdom, the transformation that is underway. As Saudi Arabia is transform transforming, the skills base that it needs is going to come from, in large part, those students who study overseas. No country can have economic diversification without a really solid foundation in technical and vocational education and training as well. So I think that's where we can build on those education ties between Saudi Arabia and Australia.
The diplomatic relationship between Australia and Saudi Arabia is a long one for this region. Um, we have had a diplomatic presence here since the 1970s down in Jeddah and then in 1984 we moved the embassy up here to Riyadh. We've had some ministerial visits which has been good to see. But Australia ranks the third freest economy in the world. So if we are to grow the relationship between Saudi Arabia and Australia, it is as important for the commercial sectors to be talking to each other. And so I've been incredibly pleased to see the CEOs of a number of very large Australian companies visit Saudi Arabia. Growing the business-to-business -business relationship requires engagement with the Australian private sector as much as it does with the Australian government. There's a very big focus on the Australian side for trade diversification, and that's a focus for Saudi Arabia as well. The underpinning of our bilateral trade relationship at the moment is agricultural commodities. And we have a very strong and growing food security relationship between Saudi Arabia and Australia. One of the advantages that we find is that Australia is a predictable regulatory environment and that means that we are a sound partner for that relationship. And we know that in Saudi Arabia we have a partner who understands us in the agricultural sector particularly. That relationship is one that is growing rapidly. Australia is a country that exports 75% of what we grow. We're a nation of 26 million people that has enough food for 75 million people. So that means that we are a major food security partner for a lot of countries around the world. Part of my job has been to educate Canberra that for Saudi Arabia, as other countries in this region, security around supply chains and security around guarantee of supply is important. And we have had a number of senior officials from our Ministry of Agriculture come here to see for themselves and go home with a better understanding of how we can foster that relationship. Uh, للمملكة العربية السعودية هي أستراليا ومن أهم الدول فيما يتعلق بالواردات من أستراليا يعني كانت كانت أستراليا دولة مهمة جدا في وقت من الأوقات كنا نستورد كميات كبيرة من السيارات من أستراليا وباعتبار أنها كانت صناعة متقدمة في أستراليا ولكن الآن انتقل الاهتمام من السيارات إلى البتروكيماويات والمواد المصنعة والمنتجات البلاستيك المصدرها لاستراليا بقيمة تصل إلى أقل حوالي مليار ونص دولار وفي الوقت هذا كانت الصادرات الأسترالية تصل إلى المملكة مع التركيز على المواد الغذائية بأنواع مختلفة وبالذات بطبعة الحالة القمح والشعير استيراء يعني أمور مهمة جدا نستوردها من أستراليا والجزية الأخرى هي تنمية الاستثمار استطاع مجلس الأعمال السعودي الأسترالي أن يرفع حجم الاستثمارات السعودية في أستراليا إلى حوالي ثلاثة مليار ريال واستطاعوا كذلك أن يجتذبوا أربعة مليار ريال من الاستثمارات الأسترالية إلى المملكة تتنوع الاستثمارات هذه في العقارات وفي الزراعة بطبيعة الحال بسبب الاهتمام بالقمح والشعير ومجموعة أخرى من الاستثمارات في في المجال الصناعي For me, Vision 2030 is a roadmap to where Saudi Arabia wants to be. And in that sense, it is incredibly important for the Kingdom. The GIGA projects are the flagship projects of Vision 2030. But in between those GIGA projects, there are other really important things happening. Social transformation, regulatory reforms, 
and the economic diversification that will encourage a vibrant and dynamic private sector in the kingdom. At the top of all of that, there needs to be someone who can get down into the detail and understand what is happening uh, and to drive it forward. And I understand that that's happening very much with His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's role as the key architect and driver for Vision 2030. What strikes me as unique about Saudi Arabia and Vision 2030 is that there are very few countries where you see that push for transformation from both the top and the bottom. Usually it's one or the other. Here in Saudi Arabia, it's both, and that's very important. There is a surprising number of Australians who are working on the GIGA projects and other elements of Vision 2030. Um, for example, up at NEOM, the second highest number of expats in white collar occupations is Australians. And that's replicated across a few of the GIGA projects. The opportunities that we see for Australia are in niche areas that reflect commonality between Australia and Saudi Arabia. We're both big countries. We're both G20 economies. We're both very dry countries that have to be very, very careful about how we use water. And so there's an Australian company that has been critical to how some of these giga projects write their water regulations and ensure that they use water efficiently. وكانوا يبحثون ويستفسرون عن مجموعة من البرامج والمشاريع والمبادرات الموجودة في وهذه ميزة مهمة في 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 الرؤية وهي أنها توضح المطلوب تماما ليست عموميات وبالتالي يستطيع سواء كانت الحكومات أو مجموعات رجال وسيدات الأعمال أن يطلعوا على المجالات المهمة التي يهمهم أن يشاركوا فيها فكان ال الأستراليين مهتمين بالرؤية ويبحثون في مجموعة من من البرامج المهمة بالنسبة لهم حتى أننا يعني في اجتماعات مجلس الأعمال يعني نقضي جزء كبير من وقتنا في الحديث عن الرؤية وبرامجها الأخرى وهذا أدى في رأيي إلى ارتفاع مستوى الاهتمام الأسترالي في بالمملكة العربية السعودية من خلال متطلبات وبرامج الرؤية فيما يتعلق بالأمور التي تحتاج نحتاج القيام فيها لرفع مستوى التعاون سواء اقتصادي أو غير اقتصادي هو تطور القول عاملة كمثال جزء مهم جدا من اهتماماتنا في المملكة العربية السعودية وأسرائيل نجحت نجاح كبير في هذا الموضوع وممكن أن ننقل خبرتهم إلى المملكة باستخدام واحد من البرامج المهمة في الواقع في 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 الرؤية والخطوة الثانية التي يتصور أنك حاجة لها وهو فتح خط طيران مباشر بين المملكة وأستراليا عندما يتوفر الخط المباشر تقفز التجارة والاستثمار قفزات كبيرة جدا وبالتالي أتصور أنه يعني بطبيعة الحال هناك حاجة إلى رفع درجة اللقاءات تكرار اللقاءات سواء كان في اللجنة المشتركة أو في مجلس الأعمال الآن التقنية الموجودة لا تتطلب سفر مسافات طويلة باستمرار ولكن يمكن عقد هذه الاجتماع وتوفير هذه المعلومات بوسائل متعددة من خلال التقنية One of the most important roles of diplomats is to explain our home country to our host government and to explain the country that we're living in to our home country. But the people of our two countries have an important role to play there too. Building those people-to-people -people ties, understanding each other, is really important. Coming here to Saudi Arabia and seeing what is happening is a real eye-opener. But I also hope that Saudis will visit Australia to see how much we have in common, but also for each of our people 
to see how much we can learn from each other.